A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It has been one or two months. I'm very sorry for not posting very frequently, but with finals going on in my 13th grade and also a lot of commissioned work in my carpentry stuff and also just family in general, time's a bit short. So bear with me. I'm trying to get back to YouTube and I got a plan. Let me know down there in the comments below if you like it. I would like to just post from time to time a few little um, challenge problems you could say. And this brings us to today's video. Namely, I want to present two problems to you. The first one is this right here, where we have a bit of a problem with the exponent right here. And also we have the integral, which looks a bit weird from 0 to 4 of x choose 5, integrate with respect to x. Try them out for yourself and then keep watching the video for the solution. And as mentioned before, let me know down there in the comments below if you like this short little format and if you want to see more. And now we are going to dive straight in. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the wonderful people over in Brian. More information at the end of the video, please check them out. Their services are great. Now, what is the problem with this math equation right here? Well, you can see in only case something like this would be extremely easy if we just were to compare the unknowns right here, like x. So this right here fits, so we have 1 over x and 1 over 2025, but right here we have a problem. If we were to plug 2025 into our x, we would run into 2026 20, over here. So this really doesn't check out right now. So what we want to do is we want to use our main idea of basically comparing the unknowns and getting our result. But for this, we need to transform the left-hand side of this equation at first a tiny little bit. And this problem is actually fairly easy by just introducing, for example, a change of variable. We are introducing a little substitution. So we are going to say, let our problem child, which is exactly x plus 1, be equal to some new variable t. This also means that if we have just x lying around, we are going to get equivalently that x may be transformed to t minus 1. And now we can plug all of this into here, and then we can move on with the algebra a tiny bit. Now, what we are going to get is, um, no, I'm just going to repeat our equation right here. Um, okay, we are going to end up with 1 plus 1 over and then t minus 1 is the same as x to the teeth power. Now, what can we do next? I mean, now we got to the point where we could basically compare the exponent right here, but we are still not good to go because we still have this part down here which doesn't fit for our purposes. So the next thing we could quite possibly do here is we could add our fractions together and see where this gets us. Now if we were to expand this one right here by t minus one over t minus one, we are going to get t minus one divided by t minus one plus one over t minus one to the teeth power. And now by using our common de denominator, we can bring those two fractions together, leaving us overall with t minus 1 plus 1 divided by t minus 1. And you're going to notice something peculiar, md that 1 and negative 1 is going to cancel out, leaving us overall just with t divided by t minus 1 to the teeth power. Now this might look a bit inconvenient right now because this really doesn't look like what we got here. But the cool thing is, the very, very cool thing about this part of the equation is now that we have an exponent up here. And by using exponentiation rules on a fraction, we can just turn the sign around on our exponent to basically inward our fraction to get a reciprocal. Now this right here is equivalent to saying we have t minus 1 divided by t to the negative teeth power. And this is perfect because now we have two fractions which we can actually split up. This leaves us with t divided by t minus 1 over t to the teeth power. And lo and behold, t divided by t is the same as 1. And then we are going to get minus 1 over t. Oh, I have a negative t up here. Now, where do you want to get? We want to have the same number down here as we have in the exponent. Our exponent is negative t. And the very cool thing is that we actually have a negative t on the right hand side too. By 
putting a plus here and just putting the negative sign into the denominator, we actually can now compare our unknowns to the number that we have right here, giving us our unique solution. Namely, that negative t is the same as 2025. Now we want to get back to our original variable x because, well, this is what the problem states. So this right here, t is nothing other than x plus 1. So this right here is going to turn into negative x minus 1 is equal to 2025. Or overall, if we were to add 1 on both sides, um, then we are going to get 2026. And then by multiplying both sides by negative 1, is that equal to 0? We are going to get that x is equal to negative 2026. And this right here is our solution. Pretty satisfying, right? This takes us right to the next year. <laughs> I really like this problem. It's just simple algebra, but it's a little bit of a brain teaser. And I really like this. And I hope you did enjoy the first problem. And now we are going to go over to the second one. Namely, we have the integral from 0 to 4 of x choose 5 integrate with respect to x. And obviously the first thing that we could do here is we could just write out what x choose 5 actually is. By definition, this is the same as x factorial divided by. And now what we are going to get is um, x minus 5 factorial um, times 5 factorial. And all of this integrated with respect to x. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can play around with our variable a tiny little bit. Namely, we know what x factorial is. x factorial is the same as x times x minus 1 factorial times x so and x minus 1 factorial is the same as x minus 1 times x minus 2 factorial and so on by the recursive definition so what we can do is we can just write this out as the integral from 0 to 4 of x is the same as just mentioned x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times and then we are going to get x minus 3 we are going to get closer. Just give me a second. Next up, what we are going to get is x minus 4. And last but not least, x minus 5. And you could go on up until everything is used. Okay, if x were, for example, a discrete variable. But other than that, by the recursive definition of the factorial, this is the same as x minus 5 factorial as being the last part. And then all of this divided by x minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. And now the cool thing about that is obviously that we can cancel those two out. Now 5 factorial is the same as 120 so we can bring this to the front. So this right here, right, right here turns into 1 divided by 120 times the integral from 0 to 4 of x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4 integrate with respect to x. Now this right here might seem like a mess and this problem in and of itself is not difficult. But I have chosen exactly x choose 5 right here because we can introduce a very clever substitution to basically make all of this right here collapse in and of itself. And I just really like this approach and this is why I'm including it here. You could quite possibly just multiply everything out, get a polynomial and just plug all the numbers in and then you could call it quits. But that wouldn't be cool and also not very quick to do in the video and also extremely boring. Now what we are going to do is we are going to turn this right here into a symmetric, symmetric integral. I'm terribly sorry about that. And for this what we are going to do is we are going to let x minus 2 be equal to t. Why am I using x minus 2? Because if we take a look at the upper and lower bounds, what we are going to get is if x is equal to 0, we are going to get t being equal to negative 2. And if x is equal to 4, we are going to get 4 minus 2, which is 2. So this right here turns into a symmetric integral. Now the next thing that we are going to take a look at is what happens. Well, we obviously also have the x is equal to the t. So this right here is a very easy differential to do. But what happens to all of our other parts that we got right here? Now x is the same as t plus 2. Now x minus 1 is hence going to be the same as t plus 1. And I think you get the pattern. x minus 2 is what we substituted. And then we get t minus 1 times t minus 2. And now you might see why this is extremely 
cool. Because now what we can do is we can use the binomial formula, the difference of two squares on t plus 2 and t minus 2. This right here is going to turn into 1 divided by 120 times the integral from negative 2 to 2 of those two together are going to give us t squared minus 4. Now those two are done. Now we have the same thing here. It's pretty symmetric now, even though it didn't look like it before. t plus 1 and t minus 1 together turns into t squared minus 1. And now we have times t. <laughs> and here's where the fun really begins. Now why have I turned it into a symmetric integral? Well, there's a reason for that. If we were to have, for example, an even function over a symmetric integral, then that would just be 2 times the integral from 0 to the upper bound. But there's also another rule. If we have a symmetric integral of an odd function, this is just zero. I have made several videos on that. Now, is this right here an odd function? Well, if we were to substitute negative t into here, so negative t squared is also by definition the same as t squared. So those parts right here are actually even functions. But this polynomial of the first degree part that we have right here is an odd function and an odd function times an even function is by definition an odd function. So this right here is overall an odd function over a symmetric integral. This right here is just zero. And this is the only reason why I put it in here because this integral just looks hella weird and we just get zero out. It's, it's kind of a bit anticlimactic, but I really liked this integral and I wanted to include it here as a little brain teaser and I hope you have enjoyed what you have seen today. And if you want to see more STEM related stuff, mathematics, physics and so much more, then the contents of today's sponsor Brain might be the perfect fit for you. Now this integral right here is kind of curious because if we take a look at x choose 5, this really doesn't look anything like a symmetric function in some kind of way at first. I mean, it doesn't look like a function whatsoever. But if we were to take a look at all of this graphically, at this polynomial and also the substituted one, you would see that it does indeed yield an odd function overall. And the graphical interpretation when it comes to things like those, like an odd function over a symmetric integral, are really important in calculus, analysis and so many more branches in mathematics. And this is where Brilliant really shines at. Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. It really doesn't matter what you want to learn today, be it the mathematics that we do today, physics, computer science, chemistry. It seriously doesn't matter what it is in STEM you are interested in. Brilliant can deliver you with some of the greatest courses that you could quite possibly get your hands on when it comes to learning something new on a daily basis, either on your computer in the World Wide Web or by using their app on the go, for example, when you are in the bus on your way to work or maybe to university. It really doesn't matter what you're striving for. Preint will certainly get you one or more steps ahead in the right direction in your STEM studies. And the best way to experience Brilliant is by just taking a look at their courses in general. Their course concept is seriously amazing. It doesn't matter what you want to learn if you take a look at their calculus course, for example, because it fits the theme of the video very well. Then you are going to notice that you can play around with a lot of graphics. You can even transform those graphics by, by playing around with buttons and levers and the like. And by playing around with those graphics visualizations and the graphs of the functions, you are actually going to get a better understanding of the problems at hand and a better understanding of what happens to, for example, functions under transformations. It's just seriously cool and I can't recommend Preend enough. And you should try it out for yourself and just see for yourself if it could fit into your STEM studies right now by using my link at the top of the description pre.org slash flamblemass with it or the QR code somewhere up here in the corner you can try the whole landscape of print for completely free 30 day free trial of amazing awesomeness try it out and see if it could benefit you in any kind of way and if it can then I invite you to fully make use of my link and get 20% of an end appearance subscription it's a seriously amazing deal and you should consider trying it out just turn a little bit, play around with everything, try to get into a course of something that you haven't previously studied and just see if you can learn something new right now. It's seriously worth a try. Try it out 
and this would really support the channel and I want to once again thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And well, I'm gonna see you guys uh, next week, I promise, just gonna be another video. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. See ya.